this week on the Roommates Podcast. So many of us point the finger at each other. Mm-hmm. It's all we do. Men point the finger at women, women point the finger at men. When a woman says what men do wrong, what do the men do? What women do wrong? Mm-hmm. When, a woman, when the men say what women do wrong, what do, what do the women do in response? Mm-hmm. Here's what men do wrong. Like every time we've posted a video about something wrong that men do, all the men then post, well, the girls, women do this, and women do this, and women, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't even acknowledge, like, yo, that's true, that's we true. effed up, yeah, that's yeah. on us. Yeah. And you know, you know what happens when we post what women do. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Every girl wants to talk I about- have, Man, massage or what? <laughs> <laughs> Every girl wants to simply talk about the problems that men do. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, we're not hearing each other. Mm-hmm. Man, men and women both have pains. Both broken. And we both done bad things to one another. Both jacked up. And we got to find a way to move forward. Yo, what's good, America? It's your boy, Hafiz. Chris, the start of the show, baby. Yeah, Chris is back. <laughs> Chris so is good back. To be back around civilization. Whoa, because, welcome, uh, welcome, welcome back. India, different, it's a different world up there, man. Man, welcome back. And you. welcome to the Roommates Podcast, a late night conversation taking you behind the scenes of becoming, featuring all the interesting people, perspectives, and conversations you experience on the way. Also, also known as the best hour of your week where you are. Entertain like a stand up, educate like a TED talk, and enlighten like a star, man. Yes, 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 Ooh. yes, 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 yes. What's going on, player? What's good, bro? No, I'm asking you the question, God dang. What's going on with me? <laughs> yeah, man. I, we haven't talked in a, you know what I mean? We talk like. What once a week? Yeah, maybe barely. Which is probably, eh? Yeah, good. But oh, what well, quick announcement! Oh God, okay, do that, do. man! Shout God. out to YouTube. Shout out to the YouTube viewership. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the YouTube viewership. Yeah. Everybody listening on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, wherever you may be listening. Yep, guys, thank you so much for every single message you guys. Have sent us. Yep. Ray was so overwhelmed. Oh man, now nah, he was bragging. To me. <laughs> He's like, I'm the star now. I'm like, All right, well, Ray, is. Ray was so overwhelmed by you guys' messages, and I was overwhelmed by it, guys. I I love it, man. Everybody who's mentioning us in your stories, yeah. yo, thank that you guys, crazy, man. Hey, some people do it every week, and I love them. I love yeah, them for man. it. Everybody who retweets the stuff, man, I love you guys. Everybody who's Tagging your friends in our videos. Yep. I love you guys, man. I don't think words can really express yep. like how much I absolutely care about every single person who messages us. It's real, it's crazy, bro. Like, I just want to thank people that's been checking up on me as well. Like, yeah. even, you know, if it's the DM or whatever, but people have been checking up on me as well because I've been, I guess I've been missed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you have. But, uh, but no, nah, it's, it's insane. Like some of the emails that we get. Yeah. Um, Everybody sends us emails. Yo, I love you guys. Yeah, like, you know, I had a phone conversation. Shout out to Brian. Like that was, that was <laughs> probably one of the best conversations. Probably the best, one of the best highlights of November so far. Oh, wow. That, that phone conversation really just inspired me mm. and inspired him to, I told him, I was like, yeah, you, I was like, it's one thing to talk. Yeah. It's like, you you know the plans. Now it's time to execute. Yeah. Man. You know, you, know you the got path, the momentum child, inside. So, um, you know, it's just been it's been surreal just yeah. hearing all the feedback and seeing all the success that, you know, we've been having and um I'm forever grateful for it for sure. Yeah. So what's really dope about the podcast for people who are new to it and for people who have been checking it out, when it comes to McDonald's <laughs> I just thought about this on the spot. When it comes to McDonald's, most people know that McDonald's doesn't sell burgers. What does it sell, Chris? Happiness. <laughs> uh, you didn't watch the, McDo- the Ronald McDonald movie? No, nah, I was cool. What's up with y'all? No, no, man. movie no, came out two years ago. This movie came out two years ago. I was outside. I wasn't watching no... There was a movie? About the founder. It's called The Founder. Oh, you talking about Netflix? That ain't yeah. a movie? No, nah, I haven't seen that. I thought you saw it. No, nah, I was too afraid because they was talking about all, all the bad stuff in the food and I want to, you know... I wasn't talking about that that much. Oh, they was talking about how The Founder was a bad person. Oh, for real? So long story short, I haven't watched Netflix since I moved. So it came out like three years ago. Oh, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it's been, it's been rough. Yeah. So the founder of McDonald's 
eventually learned that the money isn't in the selling of the food, but in the real estate. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So the, so McDonald's is oh, everywhere. Yeah, the, it's really the because they own the land yeah. in which the McDonald's is on. So yeah. there's they're really a real estate business. Yeah, yeah. no, no. So the thing sense. about our podcast is our podcast is not a podcast. Oh. Ooh. On the spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a podcast, mm. but it's a community. I a, realize that. Yeah. A real community. And you and I both said it. Every single podcast you listen to, I'm not sure how much access you have to the people. No, there's no way. I, I, I'm just not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure any single podcast in America, you have the access that if you have a question, yeah. you can ask them. Yeah. You want to just say something, they'll respond to you. I don't think you have access to the people. Yeah. I don't know how much the people who do other podcasts really care mm-hmm. about their listeners. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I think there's some people are just doing it to get famous yeah. or to make money. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to like really caring about the soul of their listeners and really always being concerned about their well-being, responding to them, talking yeah. to them, giving them as much undivided time as they need. I don't know who's doing yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the people that have the podcast or started one, they already was famous for some for something else. Yeah. Whether it was a TV show, artist, or whatever. Um, so they're used to that fame lifestyle and people always come to them asking questions, yada, yeah. yada, yada. But I always say that, you know, we're, we're nobodies, but we're somebodies mm-hmm. at the same time. So it's like, we... We built this community where we're so open with each other that yeah. they can open up to us as well. Yeah. Um, and it's just for us, just two regular guys. I'm not saying that we're regular yeah, as yeah. in the worth, but um in the podcast where I feel like we're somebody's, mm-hmm. you know, but in the world, you know, amongst, you know, the Beyonce's in the world, we're still nobodies. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, fortunately. <laughs> but, uh, but it's just I think I kinda like that though. Yeah. You know, I kinda like um the whole thing where I can people can come up to us and open up to us um, because they don't have access to the people that they want to talk to. Yeah. Um, so I, I like the way we are. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so, guys, man, that's something that is going to be our gift to you guys forever. For it's going to be our gift to you guys forever. Like we're always going to work so hard to always be there for you always mm-hmm. to be it i mean people have sent me long essays and i send them longer essays yeah, 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 <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. i mean like yeah. and i want people to honestly feel like man this podcast this community is this one place where i can actually communicate with one another i think it's super dope for people who are in the instagram comments yeah and they see somebody else who comments yeah. to like friend them, yeah. you know, and then send and them then, a yeah, DM. Yeah, I see discussions and, you know, going back and forth with each other on yeah. the comments. So it creates dialogue for everybody. So exactly. That's, that's been cool to see too. Exactly. Some of y'all been finding each other up, which is also cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm like reading the comments. <laughs> so guys, we just wanted to let you know, we absolutely love you guys so much. I know people tell you that all the time. Yeah. We love our fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, people, them people getting paid. We, uh, yeah, just, yeah. We spend a lot of money. Yeah, Credit so. Credit card bills. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man. So guys, please continue to message us. Please continue to reach out. Like it means it means a lot to us, and we yes, we sir. we love you guys so much. And I'm telling you, what you're gonna start seeing in the next couple of weeks, you're gonna be amazed by how much we're gonna be fighting to give back to you guys. Everything that you guys give to us, we're so thankful. Yep. More and more content. More and more, more, and more goodies, dynamo. all oh, that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So for sure, what's going on, bud? Man, you know what I mean. New shoes. What's happening? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. see these ones? Who are you now? Oh, the at the retired billionaires. I'm glad. I mean, we've been preaching that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's true. That's yeah. just crazy how old they are. Yeah. They're like five years old. I mean, burn them, please. Yeah. It's time to let, you know, some things. It's okay. Yeah. Come on. I worked on, I was working Uh-oh. on something. Jesus that Christ. I want to talk to you about. Not right now. Where okay. is it at? How do you tell me? Oh, here oh, it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I've been working on this. I actually saw this. I meant to pick it up, but yeah, I've been working on this, so we'll talk about it. I mean, I after this, the crazy thing, I gotta do something similar for my dad. Yeah, so. so I've been working on that because I think the big thing is it's not in the Google Drive. Is it? It's not. I see what I'm saying, man. I be looking at that. <laughs> so the big thing for me is I want to make sure that we're doing everything in our power to really give the listeners the greatest experience possible. And I would just felt like in order to 
really create something great, you need to know what God's called you to do Amen. and you need to know where God's called you to go. And yeah. so vision, mission is really important. So really breaking down this stuff and making sure that we're embodying it. You know, as we bring people on staff, we need to make sure that they also embody this culture. And I, that's my draft. And then obviously I want you to add your opinion, your ideas, what you felt like is the case. Yeah. So, so yeah. And that's, I was going to print out another version of it. So an edited version for you. I mean, you ain't got to, but, but no, nah, this, this, this is more than enough. You can just put it on the Google drive. Yeah. What's the point of Google drive? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but, um, for sure. I mean, I do think, um, you know, Great, greater power brings greater more responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we definitely need something like this to keep us, you yeah. know, keep us going, keep us motivated because, like, we definitely have, you know, a shot for sure. Yeah. Um, and we definitely have responsibilities. And, you know, like I said, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make, you know, make sure the dreams come true. And like I said, I just, I, like I told you the last time we talked, like, I know you have a gift for sure, mm -hmm. and um, you know you do might. too. You do too. You do too. I'm for mm -hmm. real. I want to talk to you about that. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's like if it's any way that I can help us, you know, get to that level where you know we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to fight. That's a fight I'm willing to continue going. You know, forever. So yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's do it. it. Let's it's do gonna it. Be fun. It's gonna be fun. But yes, yeah, so I've been working on that. I've been. Honestly, I've been overthinking a lot as usual. Yeah, and you haven't been staring at the window, have you? No, I Is haven't. I've been, I've been staring at that and other and other things as well, and listening to a lot of different stuff. Yeah, and I've just been planning out 2019. Yeah, 2019 is gonna be really interesting. It is. I have some ideas, but what about you, man? People no, having people miss you out. It's you, man. It's oh. a, what's going on in your life? I don't want to talk about like, we talk about the podcast enough. What's up? That's it, man. That's a big thing, bro. I've been I've been really focused on that. Is that I've been I just been literally thinking about so much when it came to that. Mm -hmm. Just what we're capable of, where it's going, mm -hmm. what we can do better. Yeah. All that stuff. Because it's like each Week with the show, it it's evolving. Yeah, it's like seeing a baby grow, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, see a baby grow up. So mm -hmm. it's like, man, I just I want to make sure, like a plant, we're cultivating it. Yeah, and we're helping it yeah. grow as healthy as possible. For sure, for sure. I mean, yeah, I think twenty nineteen is gonna be, I think it's gonna be even harder decisions than than it was in twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen was some tough decisions. Um, so I'm trying to prepare myself for 2019 and the challenges uh, to come, but I'm excited at the same time. Yeah. So what's going on with me? Where you, where you want to start? <laughs> I know. I mean, it's every phase of life, you know, it's, it's something. I'll tell you that right now. Man, I, I want to know your honest feelings about being away from the podcast. Because one thing that you, you said early on, earlier on is that how much the podcast means to you mm -hmm. and like how much... Like not saying your joy doesn't come from God, but how much like joy it gives you. Yeah. And then being away from the podcast at times, what feels as though pivotal moments, mm -hmm. you know, like how have you been processing that? Hmm. Um, it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really understood because I kind of left right at, you know, as things was really starting to climb. Um, and it's not saying that I really like kind of like want the attention or whatever, but I do feel like sometimes I feel like it's kind of like the podcast it says, but not really my own mm. since I've been up there. Um, it's been hard. I've been feeling stuck, honestly, just like just being here. Only thing I can provide is, you know, something, you know, monetary and that's it. Um, it's like, I know. It's like I question my value a lot. <laughs> I'm questioning if it's really necessary for me to continue. Um, you know, I got people telling me it's a one band show. Um, I got all kinds of stuff. Like, who, wait, who, who's yeah, telling man, your it's, friends it's, are telling you that? I mean, it's just it's 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 not. I wouldn't say like you know friends that need to speak into my life, but you know, it's been brought to my attention. Like you know, you know, like they want me to come back. Yeah, you know, they want want me to show up. But they do feel like, you know, what's going on with you? Like, why are you not there? What, you know, what's happening? He's doing everything, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, so that kind of weighs on me. Um, and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it's like that that one bad relationship that you need to get rid of to really see it thrive. Uh, so I've been feeling just stuck up there, honestly. Um, I mean, that's one phase, uh, I would say. But, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I don't, I, I still think that it's the right decision for me to be up there. Um, I just think it's just a time period where it's just, I'm going to just be feeling like this for a little bit. Um, and I don't know. Mm, I don't know. I don't yeah. know where to go from there, but yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's tough. Yeah, because when you say that, I think, hmm, that's what Elon Musk does when he was trying to mm. talk. Mm. Like, hmm. Hey, that. <laughs> <laughs> I would have no idea what to say to Elon Musk. <laughs> I think my fear about the show with you being up there is that like a kid who goes to sleep and miss New Year's, <laughs> what? <laughs> did you ever see? No. Did, <laughs> did you? I know you didn't watch cartoons growing up, but did you ever watch Arthur? I mean, I can't remember it. Okay, but, it's but been there's on TV. There's this. <laughs> it was an episode on Arthur. <laughs> Only thing I know about Arthur is the memes. So oh. <laughs> there's an episode on Arthur where him and DW, his sister, okay. would always go to sleep early on New Year's. Wow. All the kids would go to sleep on early on New Year's because they couldn't stay up that long. Okay. And there's this great myth about what happens on New Year's. Yeah. You know? And like, but they could never make it there because mm-hmm. they've always fall asleep. So there was just like this feeling of angst about missing out mm-hmm. on some grand experience because I can't stay up. Got gotcha. you. So I wondered how it was affecting you missing out on some of these episodes and like, man, I wish I was there. Because yeah. you feel like, oh, I'm a spectator, you yeah. know? And yeah. then not saying the episode was good because you weren't there, yeah. but they were good episodes. Yeah, no, no. You know? I mean, I'm glad they're good episodes. Yeah. I don't want them to be terrible. <laughs> and so then it was like, I didn't want you to ever feel like, because they were good without you being there, it means that you're not valuable. Mm-hmm. Does that make, make sense? No, that makes sense. Because I feel like those episodes would have been good if I wasn't there, mm-hmm. you know, but I also know that if I was there, I could also add something else. Yeah. And I was just, I didn't want you to get that feeling that because you weren't there, it means that I am not valuable because the show can go on without me. Mm-hmm. And not understand that the show is unique with you. Mm-hmm. Like, I believe that the show with with me by myself is good. Mm-hmm. And I also believe the show with you by yourself is good, which is why I've been pushing you to, yo, yeah. these ones you want to do, I got no problem just sitting holding the camera. Yeah, yeah. And But I also know the show with us together is something really special. Yeah. And that's what people fall in love with, yeah. you know? And I don't, I and I knew you being out there and just being away from it all, mm-hmm. I didn't know how that was weighed on your psyche. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's different, honestly, just... I don't think I don't think I ever been as alone um, as I've been up there. Um, it's it's really it's really nothing to do up there. I mean, I just know you know my my dad and my cousin. Um, and that's really it, you know. And for the most part, if I'm not at work or working out or I'm just sitting in the RV, yeah, <laughs> and, you know, and uh, that's not fun. Yeah. Um, so. It's like one of the things where I feel like you you ask, and I feel like everybody asks for God to challenge them and make them uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and when you get in that situation, you just really don't know what you're asking for. Yeah. Um, and it it just I just really didn't know what I was asking for. Um, cause it's it's just it's weird. Like I feel like I know like the podcast and the success of it still won't satisfy me overall. Um, I kind of had that. I've been kind of comparing myself to, you know, the woman at the well, just, you know, just thirsty for something more. Yeah. Um, and, but 
if it's not God, I'll turn to something that's just completely wrong and just unsatisfying. Um, so it's been it's been really weird. I feel like I'm still I'm sitting at the well waiting for God to show up, um, and I'm drinking something that's not you know quenching my thirst at all. What do you think? What do you think is? What are you looking for? I'm looking for a clear, you know, answer, like a clear path in my life. Answer to what question? Just what is my purpose? Like, what am I doing here? Like, what am I, what am I going to be doing for the foreseeable future? Like, yeah. it's hard for people, for like people say, you know, take it one day at a time when my top two strengths is futuristic and focus. Mm -hmm. If I have, if I don't know what I'm looking for in the future, I can't focus on something. You know, um, so it's just been really weird. It's like, I know I can do my job for my dad. You know, I know I can do it because I'm here. Uh, but if I if it's not what I'm supposed to do in five years, then I'm not going to do it. How do you feel the podcast plays into this? Well, I feel like the podcast is something where I feel like it is my purpose. Just because all the stuff that we've just been seeing and the people we've been helping and impacting. Um but it just has to make sense. And I just don't know. And make sense means like I, we have to make a livable wage off of it. Yeah. Like I have no problem going up to my dad and flipping the scenario where yeah. I'll be in Houston three to four, you know, three to four weeks and being up there every other weekend. Mm -hmm. Like I can still do my job up there. Like um, I necessarily don't have to be there because I'm going to be there enough to grow the company enough um, where I don't have to be there every single day. Um, but being up there provides us so much more opportunity. Like, since I'm not in a corporate America job, I can tell my dad, hey, I'm going to be gone for two weeks because we're going to be in whatever. Yeah. And we're going to make schedules and it's what it is, you know. Yeah. That's a perk that if I stay in Houston, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. Um, I have to make more money with my dad to buy all the things that we need or whatever, flights, yada, yada, yada. So that's a perk that's with my dad um, that I wouldn't have here. Yeah. Um, so it's a method to the madness and I guess it's just like a waiting game um, and it just it's just been playing it's just, it just been sucking because I know we need the things that we need but I feel like I'm just taking all the hits you know um, I feel like I'm just a punching bag that's gotta just suffer through the next round <laughs> and, what, and what are those hits? just you know unhappiness feeling you know unsatisfied why do you have to take that? Um, just because, like, like you said, we need we need to go places. We need the money. We need all the things that we need to make it to where we want to go. We want twenty nineteen and and achieve these goals. Yeah, I'll probably have to be in Indiana for half of that year to do that. Like, yeah, you know, that's probably that's got to happen. So I guess my question is: You saying in order to achieve these goals, I have to take all these hits and and part we'll of the make sacrifices, make because, the sacrifices. Yeah. So do you so? Do you believe that being in Indiana, which is causing you sadness, is? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say like depression. Yeah, obviously not depression, but, but sadness compared to Houston. Yeah. and Indy. It's just okay. Is that is that because of the show? Or is that because you want to help your dad? I think it's both. Honestly, it's both. Okay. I mean, I have seen with. Like I just seen some of the stuff being up there ten weeks that you know my dad definitely needed. Yeah, you know? how does it help? I guess my question is: so you're thinking that because you're because like financially it's helping you out and it's also helping you help the show. Financially, it's helping the show out. Me, like being up there, I don't need that much money. Yeah. So you're thinking that I'm working here and I'm bringing in this X amount of dollars to help put into the show. That's kind of my. Current that's sacrifice. My, that's my contribution. I only okay. can give right now. And I, and, and I guess, so here's what I'm kind of hearing from you. The, a lot of discontentment goes back to not knowing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Not being able to focus on, say, tomorrow my life is A, B, and C is going to happen. Because mm -hmm. I, if I would stem where this all kind of spiraled from, Claim Dr. Fees today. <laughs> but, but where all this spiraled from, it's senior year of college, you know who you were going to marry, you knew what you were going to do, and you knew who you were. Mm -hmm. And then slowly but surely, all these things 
became in flux, yeah. right? And then beginning of this year, did all that started to slowly come together. Mm -hmm. You know, you knew what woman you wanted to be with. You knew what you're going to do and you knew kind of building that identity because you were big on to that beginning of the year, yeah. who you are. And then all of a sudden that spirals unfolds again. Yeah. Right. But when you're talking about, I can't see into the future, I guess what I'm seeing is that because you're not doing the podcast consistently and in it consistently, something about you doesn't see it as your future. Yes and no. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to say I don't see it as like my future. It's hard to really prepare for something and focus on something where you're not doing it every day, where you're not thinking about it every day, where you're not talking about it every day. Um, that's what it is. It's not as far as like, I can't see myself not doing it. Um, I don't know when people, like I said, when the conversation that we have, as far as just not me not being there, it's just like it, it easily for my mind to think like, you know, you might as well just focus on this yeah, and just kind of lead it up the high face, yeah. you know, um, because I know how I am. And if I'm not doing it every day, I'm not actually actively doing something. Um, I just kind of just be like, man, what's the point of even doing it? You yeah. know? Um, so that's what that's what I mean by like, it's not that I don't think I can do it. It's just hard for me to really picture it doing it while you're not doing it now. Yeah. You know? So it's like, how are you going to be able to, I'm going to say I'm a pro professional athlete and you're not even playing Madden, my Jesus. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So. Yeah. And that's and that's what I said going back to what I feel like a lot of the, a lot of this stems from. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of it stems from obviously kind of how your life kind of unfolded near the near your departure to Indiana. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it also has to do with because the podcast brought you so much like you could see the growth. You can see like you like you were doing it weekly. You had something yeah. to look forward to. You know, yeah. you always had. It's like you, you're building it. Yeah, you know, and then of. all of a sudden, you're like gone. Yeah, and then as you're gone, it's like changing without you. Yeah, and so you're seeing it like in front of me is this job, which I know I want to do for now, but I'm not sure if this is my full purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And what I thought all along was my purpose without me even looking, it's just growing yeah. and it's changing. Yeah. And somehow then now you're beginning because it's growing without you, you're beginning to disconnect your future and the show mm -hmm. because it's, it's kind of like it's evolving into its own entity separate of Chris. Yeah. And so now it's hard for me to think of a, a future with a show that I'm really on or because of talking about, or or talking or, about or yeah. doing stuff with or yeah. engaging with. So, so yeah, man, I think I, I, I can see that, man. I think something that's really interesting that's happening to a lot of people that I started realizing is everybody's on this search for purpose and we're on this search for like self-actualization in a way that nobody no humans before us ever thought about mm -hmm. because everyone else was trying to survive. Yeah. Just get a job. Yeah. You get a family. job supportive. Like that's that, that was purpose. Yeah. I work at the coal factory, yep. have my wife, have my kids yep. go nine to five, nine to five, nine to five. Die. Lights on, food on the, on the dinner plate. That's my, right. that's my life. Mm -hmm. But we're asking for something greater. Yeah. We want, we just a legacy exactly young yeah. adults today like yeah. we want i want to feel fulfilled we want so much out of life that i would argue that the one percent of the one percent of people who've ever lived have never even thought about let alone had mm -hmm. so we want a point zero 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 one percent life yeah and so many people are discontent because they don't have that mm -hmm. like i had a friend Going back to what Ray was saying, like he's 29, he's like, yo, what am I doing with my life? Huh? No, not Ray, my friend. Oh, I was about to say, yeah. I was like, oh. We had a friend, yeah. Like Ray, he was like, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm 29. I have a friend who's 34 who's like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. Because we want so much more 
And in my opinion, we're also content with so much less than people who walked before us were content with and wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been recently trying to figure out. Like, why is that? Not why is that. I understand why. I mean, like I said, the stories we have is that this is the life you're supposed to be living. Yeah. You're supposed to know your purpose. You're supposed to know who you are. You're supposed mm-hmm. to, you know, be live, have this passionate marriage that's also going to last 70 years full mm-hmm. of friendship. You know, yeah. like all these things we're, we're, you're supposed, it's the norm. Yeah. And we expect this to be the norm. And because we're not having it, we're mad because we think there's something wrong with us mm-hmm. when it's not the case. Mm-hmm. When the norm is actually what we're feeling. Yeah. That's the norm. Not knowing what we're doing. Trying to figure life out. Yeah. Trying to find you. That's definitely the norm. That's the norm. Yeah. But we're not content with that. And then we feel like something's wrong with us. And then we get sad because mm-hmm. we're not living this fulfilled, purposeful life. Yeah, like I do feel like that. I do <clears throat> but I do think it's a time period. I I do think that I have enough faith in God that He will make things clear, make mm-hmm. things work. Um, and that's what I'm really just looking for. You know, what is it? You know, like if it's the business, cool. Mm-hmm. Like, good. Let's go do that. If it's a podcast, cool. Let's go do that. It's both somehow, some way. Cool. What is it like? That's that's what it's kind of like. That's what I'm kind of waiting and searching for. Um, just I just want to answer. Like, and I feel like a lot of people just want answers. Um, you know. It's, like you said, it's just tough just, you know, trying to figure it out and, and wait because it's frustrating. And when it's, things are frustrating, you... Have you ever heard of, like, um, this thing called... You, you heard of the flesh before. The flesh? Yeah. Like, in spiritually? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I always thought, like, the flesh meant, like, sexual sin. Oh, yeah. Flesh is just human nature. Flesh is just human nature. Yeah. You know, your patterns of what you do, mm-hmm. the thoughts you go to... Um, what you seek to set like for satisfaction, um, all those things, and I didn't really know that until I was reading this book, and I was just like, you know, when I feel inadequate or I feel lonely, you know, I always run to something that's always naturally, you know, easy for me to feel, you know, quick satisfaction, yeah. and um, and I feel like that's one of the things that that's been real telling to me. Um, being up there in Indy that I just need to really just put all my faith and trust into God because in this state of this loneliness faith, it's kind of like, I feel like he is working. I feel like it's something that I probably need to go through in my life. Um, When I don't see an end Mm -hmm. or I don't see like a time period, um, that's when it's like that's when I go to that the flesh pattern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I've I mean I felt like this before. Most likely, I'm sure everybody has. Like if they, you know, even went to college or high school or something, you knew, you knew college was going to end. It's like yeah, yeah I got to stay for this test and get ready for these finals, et cetera, et cetera. You had a destination. You knew it was going to end eventually. Yeah. Like now, it's like I don't know if I'm gonna be feeling like this for the mm-hmm. next three months or the next three years. Yeah. Like I don't know how long you know, that answer is coming for or when that, you know, the answer presents itself. So that's what's really giving me a lot of just yeah anxiety or whatever you want to call it, whatever have you, um, because I, I like you say, I do, I'm not completely unhappy where I was like, man, I need to get out of indie, but I am like, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> exactly. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm ready, but it's one of the things where you kind of have to leave you got to leave, you know, wherever you started in good hands, um, which I'm definitely down to do. Um, but like I said, that's the new challenge. Just not, I don't have, I have nothing to, not say look forward to, but I don't, it's no end. Like, yeah. I don't want to feel like this forever. So it's like, what's God? <laughs> yeah. What's up? <laughs> you know? What, um, what would you say is the best part of a movie? The best part of the movie? Uh, of a movie, that you, like you any go. movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw you off and say the beginning. <laughs> yeah. There's no right answer. Nah, I'm messing with you. Uh, the best part of the movie? Yeah. Hmm. What was your what was your favorite movie you saw? Best movie you ever seen? It's subjective. The Dark Knight's one of them. The Dark Knight is one of them yeah. for me as well. 
Uh, for me, it was Antoine Fisher. That's a great one. Also. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Took me on a whirlwind. Yeah. Um, Let's go Antoine Fisher. What's the best part of Antoine Fisher? What you about what? Say Antoine Fisher? I'm sorry. You <laughs> Antoine Fisher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think when he walked into that room and saw his family. When you met his real family. Okay. That was towards the end of the movie. Okay. So, so my question is, that's the best part of the movie, right? Mm-hmm. If somebody would turn on Antoine Fisher right now, mm-hmm. go to that scene and watch it, will they feel the same way you felt? Oh, no. Why? Oh, man, you got to get the whole story. <laughs> you got to get the whole story. Yeah. The whole story. Yeah. You know, like... <laughs> You writing a book now? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> nah, the whole story is important because we want the end. Mm-hmm. You want that? You want to know the end? I do. Like that. You want? Like, you want to know the yeah. end? And it's like, no. You get. You have to go through the story. No. Nah, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's one of the things that I, I realize that I hear yeah. and and trying to you know be comfortable with. And that's the hardest part. And that's the end. That's the hardest. Because you don't know where it's going to end. I have no idea what's going. And you want to know? I will. But then, if know. you knew, then what's the point of the movie? Ah. Uh, it's like somebody ruining the ending. It's okay to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, I mean, I, I yeah. definitely, I definitely get that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I, I, I'm cool. I'm glad we had this conversation because I know a lot of people relate to this, yeah. but it's freaking tough, man. It is. It's, um, it's, it's tough. Like it's a whole new challenge. Like, um, I mean, look at my face. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm on my J. Cole status. <laughs> um, but, it's been, I don't know. I've been, I've been learning about myself. But it's one of them things like you never even, like, you know, you start learning about God spiritually and all this stuff and yeah. seeing the weight of your sin. Yeah. How did you act? How did you react initially? I just stopped doing it. A lot of stuff. I just totally did went. How did you feel though? How did I feel? Like when you first like saw your like position before God. Um, I wanted to fix it. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, problem. Let's fix it right now. Yeah. I felt like shit. Okay. As far as it's like, I felt like, I felt like I was dead. Like, yeah. as far as just, just so sad and so broken. Um, and I had a point. But yeah, that's, <laughs> why, that's why, that's kind of like, the more I'm being up there, the more I'm discovering myself. Yeah. And the more, it's kind of like, you know, you walk into a house and you turn lights on and you, you can see more sin and discover more stuff that you have to grow and learn in. Um, and that's a good thing. Um, but I feel like the more I learn, the more I just feel worse yeah. and, you know, return to the flesh and feel and not really take that information and do something like, you know, tangible and do something good with it. Yeah. As far as just like, oh, uh, the more I know, it's like the more worse I feel and the more I act you know, and I, in and a complete opposite direction. And I think what's happening is you're you're on you're on the right journey of self discovery. You're just not applying what God's trying to teach you. Yeah. So it's like when when God shows you your flaws, if that makes you feel lesser than, it shouldn't. It should actually make you feel more valuable. Yeah. Because God's showing you, I saw this from the very beginning, and mm-hmm. I still chose you. Yeah, and that and that and that's how. That's how I started to relate to the prodigal son as well. Yeah. Um, just reading that and and just like after all those things that, you know, if you ever read the prodigal son, I just in general, Luke. Luke 15. Yeah, there we go. Um, go read that. But, I mean, after all what he did, you know, with his riches and stuff and God still or his father still welcomed him back and even celebrated, it's like I can definitely see, you know, how I can relate to that. I just feel like I'm still at that point where he's realizing, you know, he's eating that food and mud. and mud and stuff. And I just haven't returned home yet, if that yeah. makes sense. Like, I just haven't been like, you know what? All right, go back. It's still, it's like, oh, I mean, cricket today, I guess I'll try uh, some worms tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, worms. Worms. Um, so it's it's like I I can see myself relating more to the Bible than I ever did. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I feel like it hasn't it having like an opposite effect than what it should. Yeah. 
Um, but it's hard doing things by yourself. Yeah. And it's the isolation that's getting to you. It's probably what the, that's probably what it is. That's like. what it sounds like to me because it sounds like what I've known about you is you you hate you've hated silence. I hate silence. I guess and now you like, and now guys are like oh you hate silence oh, huh great. yeah let's yeah. go ahead and engulf you <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and so now it's just like now everything that you feared about the silence has now come true mm-hmm. and I think the hardest part about the silence in my opinion is dealing with yourself yeah that's the hardest part. It's so easy to turn on TV, put put on a song, yeah. and just have to not deal with the person in the mirror. But like part of the silence is you're forced to deal mm-hmm. with everything you've done, mm-hmm. everything you've thought, everything you've every mistake, and it's just all playing in your head. Yeah. And so I, I that's what I'm, I'm I'm hearing you. I'm like man, a lot of a lot of what I'm seeing is like there's a there's two songs playing in your mind right now. And it's like a song of who you are mm-hmm. and a song of who God's making you to be. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, you're focusing on who you are and not even the best parts, but like the worst parts of who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, I've heard like, um, I, I don't know if I I can do this or I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know. Like I'm so, like, you're such an unsurety, like uh, unsurety. I don't know. That's a word. <laughs> it is today. <laughs> it is today. <laughs> but, and so I'm like, man, I, I, I want you to really feel empowered that what you're going through is so freaking normal. Mm-hmm. You know, like, mm-hmm. like at 25, I had just got my heart broken. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, you're 24, right? Yeah. 24. I just got my heart broken. I had moved to Dallas and I had no friends. Mm -hmm. And I was just like in total limbo. Yeah. And I could never have saw 28. Never in a million years I could have saw 28. Yeah. And that's the problem with, with life is that you will never be able to see past your age. Yeah. And the crazy thing about it is you'll never be able to see tomorrow. Like everything could change tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And you have no idea. Yeah. Like literally, everything could change tomorrow. Yeah. But you just see today and you, and you see just who you are today and where you're at today and your life today and trajectory today. Yeah. Instead of seeing like, yo, where God can lead you tomorrow. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's it's tough, man. I've, I don't know. I think um, it's literally like, like you said, everything that's that I didn't like or didn't want to deal with is like put in front of me. Yeah, it's like Indiana is a cold place, and it's actually. cold too, man. Drake Drake says I winter's here. I, I mean, I heard you, you all complain about the forty degree, fifty degrees, yeah. and I'm just like, that's a blessing. <laughs> like today, it was only thirty two when yeah. I left the airport, and that's I say only as far as like that's a that's a good day. Yeah. It's only thirty two. Like, <laughs> you know? uh, so, um, just being doing that and some of the work, I feel like I'm not talented at. Well, like like if it's if most of it's labor work, yeah. And I feel like that's not my calling. That's Neither not my is it mine. <laughs> yeah, so, um, it's like it puts it forces me to go do things that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, and, you know. Um, and it's some I know I can do it. Um, it's just it's just hard. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, man. Like, like I know I'm I know I'm in it. I yeah. feel it. Like yeah. I'm in it. Um, and you know, I guess it's one of the things I just kind of you know try to take it day by day and learn something. Um, like I said, it's like I said, I'm not depressed, but. Um, like I hate the isolation part. Yeah. Like, I hate just if it was in a different city, like, yeah, yeah. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and like I hate not feeling like you know I'm helping here yeah. uh, with the podcast. Um, I hate people asking me where I'm at every week or every other week, whatever it is. Um, I just I don't know. I feel like that you know that star player that shows up to practice but don't show up to the game and something mm. stupid like that. But I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Thanksgiving's coming up in a couple of days. What are you thankful for? What am I thankful for? Yeah. Ah uh, man, that's a good question. I think I'm. I mean, I'm thankful for you know everything that I have. 
No, specifically. Well, specifically, don't go to generic. <laughs> I, mean, I was gonna get that. <laughs> Let me start off generic. Then. Um, no, nah, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for the everything I have. <laughs> no, nah, I'm thankful for like for real. Like, like I have probably the best family. Like, my mom is an amazing woman, God fearing woman. Just raised my sister and I correctly. My sister is, you know, my idol. Best friend, uh, someone that does everything, you know, right and and you know in the perfect way. Um, I have the best father in the world, less man who um, gives me the opportunity to go after my dreams. Um, and I couldn't I couldn't ask for a better better man as a father. Um, my friends, people in my life, like you, Avrion, Nick. Sam, Palo, I mean, I can name a whole lot is of Is Nick people. coming tonight? Nick is coming tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I love you know, that guy, man. Um, I wish I could stay longer. I know, right? Um, you know, Ray and the, the, the AK side crew, the UA, like all the, all everybody that's has some kind of impact on my life, I, I'm thankful for. Um, this podcast is probably the best thing that happened to me since I graduated college. Um, and... Honestly, I had no idea what you know what it was going to entail. I didn't even know what a podcast was. Yeah. I didn't know what feminism was. <laughs> like all these kind of things that we talked about. I had, it was not on my radar. Uh, but I, this podcast has you know just challenged me and grown me as an individual, and that's why I think it's something where it has to be in my life because if I don't have this, I just don't understand how I would just grow. As a man, yeah. like, I feel like I would just rely on my flesh and rely on what I see and and be like society and everybody, every other guy. Um, so definitely thankful for that. Thank thankful for Jesus. Thank you yeah. for saving my life. Shout out JC. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but I mean, just I mean, those are like the quick answers. But uh, but yeah, like, I'm 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 thankful and grateful. So sounds like you have a pretty dope life. Oh, I do. I do. I yeah, yeah. I do. Shut up, Hafiz. <laughs> don't smile at me. But like, yeah, I killed you. <laughs> no, I'm saying I killed you. I'm just saying like it's it's the point you about put in respect in, in, in perspective. perspective like that. Yeah, it's like, a song, right. bro. It's a song. Yeah, it's a song, and it's and it's something that you know I deal with. Yeah, because like, yeah. I, I wallow. Yeah. Like when something wallow. bad happens, I just sit in it. Yeah, I just literally I I enjoy I actually enjoy sitting in it, <laughs> yeah. you know, like yeah. and I've recently have to learn how to I learned it this year. Mm -hmm. I learned how to pull myself up. Like yeah, literally, no, I'm like, no, I mean, literally I'm in bed and I grab myself by yeah. the shirt and I pull myself up. And I'm like, yo, what's something that makes you feel good? And I start thinking about those. These are yeah. a few of my favorite things, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you see sound of music. <laughs> You're a weenie, man. You're a weenie at general. I'm sorry. Weenie at juniors. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I feel like that's something that I can only imagine is you being by yourself. Just you're not seeing it. It's like you can't see what do they say? The forest through the trees? Was is that the phrase that people use? <laughs> like, <laughs> the forest through the trees. I have no idea. I don't think that's right. The yeah. forest through the trees? Yeah, I guess it's saying like the trees through the forest. No, it's, 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 what it's saying. I, I, I'm guessing is that you can't see the forest through the trees. Is that because the trees are right in front of you? You can't see the broader picture. Exactly. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so I just I, I that's what I see, man. Because I'm like I look at your life. I'm like, yo, everything's about to change. How <laughs> do you see? Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Like I everything when we start when we go through this and, I, and like everything is gonna change. Yeah. And, and I feel like. Everything that you're gonna want to do in life, I truly believe you're gonna be able to do it. Yeah. But I honestly believe that you being in Indiana is not helping because you're not seeing what you need to see. So what are you trying to say? Huh? You trying to say move back? No, I'm saying oh. it's good. I know oh. I think I think you need to be there. I think this season of life is good because you're you're learning who Below is for the first time. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. It's it's like you're I imagine it as in every Rocky movie before Rocky like fights, you know how he's like training, you know, <laughs> you know, like I imagine like Rocky four, yeah. like you're in Russia, <laughs> you know, oh like, gosh. like chopping freaking wood yeah, yeah. and dogging with the slaves yeah. up like that. Yeah. And it's, and it doesn't feel good, but I know it's necessary. Yeah. No, I, like I said, 
when I, when I first made that decision to go up there, it felt like the right decision. And yeah. I still, to this day, still think it's the right decision. I believe it's the right decision. Um, it's just hard right now. Like, it's just, I mean, if I'm yeah. being honest, it's just, it's just hard because I've never been in that stage in life. Like, yeah. I always, was always comfortable. Mm-hmm. Just keep it 100. Like, I was always... It's hard living in the RV. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> it's hard as heck living in the RV. I woke up plenty of days when my water was off because it was so cold, they didn't want to freeze the water. Yeah. You ever had to use a water bottle to brush your teeth? <laughs> you? what? That's what? what I'm saying. You ever had to go to Planet Fitness just to take a shower? No, we used to use a bucket and boil the hot water and put it in a bucket and then dump it on our bodies. I will. I mean, you've been through. <laughs> you've been through a little bit, but you've you been through a little bit. But yeah, it's like, man, dang! Like, I turn the turn the faucet on, ain't no water. It's like, well, not, yeah, I use this water bottle. Like, it's it's different. Like, yeah. it it is completely different up there, uh, and it's it's challenging the heck out of me. Yeah, uh, I just what the heck was that? Was that the train truck? Oh, truck. I was like, doo doo. Oh, I got you. Got you. Um, yeah. but yeah, man. Um, I do. I do think it's necessary. And I do think it's making me overall a better man. I feel like, you know, it's gonna. It's definitely good coming out of it. Yeah. Um. You know. So. Everybody who's in it, like, you hey, know, yeah, who's in it. in it, call me. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm here. I'm with you. <laughs> like, trust me. Like, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely the podcast to to share what we're going through, and you're yeah. not gonna see everything perfect with yeah. us because. You know, I just that's just one part of my life. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't even want to talk about girls. <laughs> you know, I don't even want to go down that road. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, you know, I always trying to find a girl in Indy. I know, man. Swing and a miss. There's nobody up there. Yeah. Ask me. Ask me. <laughs> Is there any girls in Indiana? <laughs> any girls in Indiana? <laughs> it's a hard no. It's a hard oh, no, man. man. It's a hard. I mean, I'm very hard. I got kind of dizzy just doing that. <laughs> but it's a very hard no. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. I yeah. haven't hugged, <laughs> <laughs> bro. When you when you told me <laughs> when you told me I haven't touched a woman in months, <laughs> I haven't touched a woman in months. Like, I'm not even. I'm being very frank. I haven't touched a woman in months. It's it was absolutely so insane. absolutely hilarious. Oh my god! I was like, uh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you take, yeah, you take things for granted. Go ahead, take things for granted. Happy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I, I'm this close to getting a tender. Oh, for real? But I'm not gonna do it though. Why? Try it out, man. Take some pictures. Get it all situated. Try it out. See what it's like. <laughs> I know it's gonna be disappointing. Man. No man. I have to, it's, yeah, it's Houston, just know Houston is a different. It's Houston and Indianapolis is not. It's, it's not night and day. day. It's comp- in every aspect. Yeah. Every aspect. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you know. So, oh man. Oh uh, yeah. It's 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 uh it's it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. I think it's good for you, man. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm say that. It must be really easy, you know, sitting here. Nice, fancy apartment. I remember I had this. I remember this life. I remember this life. Oh, man. Man. Take it for granted. Take it for granted, man. I don't take it for granted. <laughs> must be nice. I don't take it for granted, man. <laughs> nah, I mess with you. Oh, <laughs> shoot. We, we were supposed to talk about something else, but that didn't happen. No, it's all good, man. It's all good. We can still talk about it. Um, oh, man. But yeah, I think that's, I think that's, um, like you said, it's something I'm learning yeah. and something I'm going to deal with. Uh, so it's good. It's a method to the madness. And I do feel like everything is going to work out at the end. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And I'm excited and I can't wait for it. I just hope it happens tomorrow. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah well, that's, we, that's we pulling true. up. We're I hope you're ready. We're pulling up. No, that's ex- sure. that's cool, dude. But, yeah, man. I think, no, I think this is a really good part because I think it's cool because you go on the roommate's Instagram. You go on your Instagram. 
Like from the outside looking in, everything looks so super amazing. You yeah. know, this looks awesome. Like, yo, these dudes are living a dream. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You got to do what and go where and talk to who and fly out fly, where. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. super awesome. But like you said, it's like you're still a human being. Yeah. Everyone's going through this. No, everybody's you know? going through it for Imagine sure. Imagine what Justin Bieber's going through. I mean, I, he cut all his hair off. That's <laughs> the yeah. I'm for real. I just thought about it, man. I can't wait to talk to Justin one day. Oh, but, my. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, like, I love to talk to him. Because I, I, yeah. think about it, he's at the top of the mountain and he's still going. Everyone, everybody goes through it exactly and the worst part about it is the higher up you are the less people care about you going through exactly. it exactly because you have the money you have the fame you got all that stuff you're not supposed um, to feel lost to, so yeah like what what are you feeling when you have X, Y, and Z yeah so you know I, I, I hear you man like I can't wait to talk to a lot of people about this too um, because it's it, and I feel like the story can come through anybody mm -hmm. like you know all the people that we're trying to get in LA yeah. I feel like all the men yeah. For sure can tell us like yeah. exactly what we're going through and how we're going through. Yeah. So it's I mean, I just can't wait. I just can't wait to talk to those people. Yeah. Uh, answer your emails. Huh? I said answer your emails. Duh, answer your effing email. Ah. See what y'all <laughs> Y'all push them to <laughs> push me to the limit. I know, right? What, but, happened, what happened to Young Jeezy? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kind of Young Jeezy. Hey, they had a run. Don't disrespect. They had a run. They had a run, man. Especially Akon. Especially Akon. Uh, I remember the video of Akon dunked on that girl. <laughs> <laughs> Don't okay. respect, bro. Well, flew to Africa after that. <laughs> he really disappeared to Africa after that. That's yeah. crazy. But um, he trying to run for president, by the way. But shout out to Akon. Shout out to Akon. Answer your email. <laughs> But one of the things I was also thinking about, I've been thinking about this for the longest. You think a lot? I do. I do nothing. I have no TV, no nothing here, but my thoughts and a piece of paper that I write down something. I have antenna TV, fam. You know that stuff for me. Yeah, what? Antenna TV. Oh, wow. That's crazy. They saw, I thought I thought antennas don't work. <laughs> Welcome to Indiana. <laughs> antenna Ant television. Antenna. Ant I, <laughs> bro, I why, why? You said it was like like it was a new cable network. You no. don't have antenna TV. <laughs> no, I have antenna to hook it up. TV. I still have the thing. You have to put the screw in and whoop whoop whoop. And you have to like and tilt to it to the side to find the channel. That's insane, bro. So like the the, <laughs> the stuff you see. Into, <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, those thingies. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, it's yeah, it's wild. Mm -hmm. Antenna, yeah. yeah, no Wi-Fi. I don't even know what Wi-Fi is no more. Man, I'm sorry, bro. You take things for granted. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome to civilization. Oh yeah, find some um, prostitutes today. No, <laughs> we're, just kidding, we're just kidding, guys. We're you just go, kidding. We're just kidding. We're just kidding. Maybe he's always thinking too far. <laughs> always, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> um, but uh, nah. So one of the things I was thinking about, I've been, I've been feeling this for a long time, mm -hmm. is that there is a gender war going on. Mm hmm. And I'm not talking about gender pronouns and all that, that pronouns. stuff. Say we'll say it for JP later. What I'm talking about is I feel like there's this huge anger mm -hmm. between men and women. Mm -hmm. And here's where it started. Adam and Eve? That's what you're about to go to? No, no, no. Oh. Where, where, where I started realizing like how serious this was. Oh, okay. A couple of months ago when I was... Perusing through Twitter, do. as I used to back in the day. Don't do it anymore. I was perusing through Twitter, and this girl, always a girl, a lot of <laughs> followers, no offense, yep. <laughs> a lot of followers, yep. tweeted out, I know there's good men out there, mm -hmm. but how come we don't talk about all the bad men who do bad things to women and their families? I feel like that's all we talk about. Hey, we'll get to there. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. Just like you, I felt that way. Uh huh. So I immediately responded. Yeah. You know, yes, there's good men. Yes, there's good women. Yes, there's bad men. Yes, there's bad women. So many people focus in on all the bad men. They don't appreciate the good men. Okay. And I just, I kind of went, I messaged it and she said, message her. And then she responded back to me. Oh, congratulations. And she was you like, for the number after that? Nah, <laughs> definitely no. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> but then she responded back to me. See, He's doing it again. I simply didn't say there wasn't any good men. 
all I said was that there's bad men who do bad things, but look at you like a man trying to deflect the issues. Okay. And then all the guys commented on my stuff and was like sharing my stuff. And then all the girls were commenting on her stuff and sharing her stuff. Yeah. And then I realized, I said, I was wrong. Okay. I was wrong. Mm -hmm. Because her point was, there's good men, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about the bad men. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, 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 no. What about the bad women? Yeah. What about the, da, 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 da? What, about, what about the good men? Yeah. That's not what she was talking about. She said, there's a time to talk about good men. Right now, I want to talk about bad men. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I felt like that was interesting is because so, so, so many of us point the finger at each other. Mm -hmm. It's all we do. Men point the finger at women. Women point the finger at men. When a woman says what men do wrong, what do the men do? What women do wrong? Mm -hmm. When a woman, when the men say what women do wrong, what do, what do the women do in response? Mm -hmm. Here's what men do wrong. Like every time we've posted a video about something wrong that men do, all the men then post, well, the girls, women do this, and women do this. And women, yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't even acknowledge like, yo, that's true. That's we true. effed up. Yeah, that's yeah. on us. Yeah. And you know, you know what happens when we post what women do. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Every girl wants to talk I about- have, Man, massage <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Every girl wants to simply talk about the problems that men do. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, we're not hearing each other. Mm -hmm. And then I'm starting to see that there's so much anger and resentment that both of us are having towards each other. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> Each other. Because when a girl does something wrong, a man will share about what wrong she does mm -hmm. or she did. And then all the men will be like, man, that's why you can't trust these hoes. That's why you can't do yeah, this. Yeah, you know, yeah. after you, da, 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 da. everybody's pissed off because yeah. of one thing one girl did. Yeah. A girl says one thing one guy did. All these girls, these niggas ain't this, da, 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 da. And then these are commenting, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. All these girls now mad. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, like, there's just so much tension mm -hmm. between us two. And we have to find a way to solve it. I think like, I think how you said it, Darren, all that soliloquy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I think self-awareness is big. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had this this one girl say, all, all the bad things that women do is a reaction to what a man did to her first. Mm -hmm. I was just like, Huh. I said, I don't think that's true. Yeah. Um, like, that's kind of insane. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I do think that people have to realize the mistakes they made. Mm. And I think, I think people want to hear stuff in the way they can receive it in the proper manner. Because if you tell me what I did wrong and you scream at me, I'm not listening. Like that's just off top. Like that takes me back to my childhood. I only like that's not gonna properly present itself in the in the way you're trying to communicate me. That's just not gonna happen. Um, and if you go on social media, I'm sure that's not gonna be a positive reaction to any like to what you're trying to tell that person. Um, so I think that's really important because I feel like people do things out of you know well. He cheated on me, so I get the right to do whatever I want after that because he hurt me. Like just because you hurt me, I'm gonna make you feel the same way that you uh, how I feel, and that gives me every right to do whatever. But people don't do like people don't want to help that person or tell them how I feel, you know, in a loving way, and that's where that disconnect is. So if you have both sides of the coin going at each other and telling them how they messed up wrong and in the manner in which they do it, you're going to continue to have this, this clash and tension forever. So the better question is like, how can we better communicate, you know, how, the hurt we feel? And I think also it kind of deal with shame because that was what I've been learning too, that shame is very powerful. Um, if you know you hurt somebody um, and, and you're shameful for it, you can definitely create patterns and habits of yourself that's unhealthy, and some of those patterns un and and uh, some of those patterns can be something where they can go to Twitter or they can isolate themselves and be you know continue to have their broken heart and continue to help. I mean, continue to break people as they go along with life because of the shame that 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 they're dealing with and they don't want to you know 
share what's going on. So I think that's another factor in as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's tough, bro. People don't like, people don't know, like, are not really self aware, and people don't want to take responsibility either. Mm. Like, I cheated on you because you didn't text me at two a.m. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, um, it's it's a lot of stuff, man. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Just just even that's just making my head hurt. Just <laughs> what what all can be the right answer and causes to you know the hurt that people feel. Um, especially towards men and women. Yeah, man. I get right. <laughs> but that point about taking responsibility is so real. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. If you both people taking both, responsibility, both. and yeah. it's it's a sign of maturity. It is. Like, it's the hardest thing to do, but it's one of the most important signs of maturity is responsibility. Yeah, because if you're willing to admit where you're wrong, it's showing you know that you have growth. And I think it's also a sign of maturity. Is is also discipline and self-control as yeah. well and not continue to make the same mistakes and mm. um because I mean I question you know men or women if somebody is that has hurt you in the way you do it it's a sign of maturity as well yeah if you do the most or hashed out you know <clears throat> and I understand things are hard and I'm not condemning anybody before that um but if you know if 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 it's something super small and like I said, that can be relevant, but yeah. you hash out and make it a huge deal about something, it's something that's going on inside it as well. And that's what go back to self awareness. Yeah. Man, because remember when you were in kindergarten and you <laughs> <laughs> You hear some of the things you be saying. <laughs> but remember, remember that like, first time you laid down. <laughs> on the bed? No. But remember that time in kindergarten when you did something wrong to somebody or somebody did something wrong to you. Like they took your lunchbox mm -hmm. or they they like took your toy and then you like hit them. Yeah. Or you took their toy. Yeah. And teachers or like- you cried. You, <laughs> that too. <laughs> and teachers like, why'd you hit him? Or why'd yeah. you do that? And they're like, well, he did it first. He did it. Yeah. Like, and they're like, it doesn't matter who did it first. Yeah. Why'd you do that? I think what happens is it's like- It's like football. It's like somebody get a like somebody exactly. hits somebody and they always catch the second person. Exactly. Yeah. And so what I'm seeing is that women wa want to put the blame on men. Yeah. And men want to put the blame on women. Yeah. And with that being said, there will never be a solution. Yeah, because they don't they they that's why self awareness like you they have to understand that both men and women are broken. Exactly. You start off we're bad. humans. Yeah, we're both like, humans. It, yeah. Like we're both gonna make mistakes and we're gonna screw each other up. Yeah. I mean, blaming somebody else is not gonna solve any problems. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's what I'm noticing. Like, there's so many, so many men who will say the only reason I do X is because this girl made me. Yeah, yeah. This girl made me mad. So only reason we cheat is because because only reason we hit is because only yeah, reason yeah, we yeah, leave yeah, is like yeah. everybody has a because. And then so many girls. Well, the only reason why we don't trust you guys is because and everybody has their because. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, if we're gonna play this game, we can go for days because who did it first? Yeah. Well, you hurt me. Well, I only hurt you because my dad hurt me. Well, yeah. my dad only hurt me because his mom hurt him and my yeah. his mom only hurt like we where are we gonna yeah, like, what, what, what's, what's going in? Yeah. Until we take responsibility and say, this is what we do wrong. We're sorry. Yeah. And that's just it. Not, and, and, not, and not say that to but, then tell you, feel, but, yeah. but then this is what you do wrong. Now tell me sorry. And, and it's the hardest thing because I realize that like sometimes like when you're arguing with somebody that you care about, debating what you care about, when you when they call you out for something you do wrong, the first thing you do is say, "Well, you do this." Yeah, and it, like you said, it's just so hard. Yeah, it's, it's extremely hard. Like, I mean, I know I'm quick with a rebuttal. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. And you want to go down this road? Okay. Yeah, but not nah, um, to just acknowledge that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think acknowledgement is definitely part of self awareness. Yeah. Um, And it's it's tough because I always naturally blame myself anyway, and I already naturally, um, you know, like be down on myself. But I was just I was that brings me to me like a thought if like if women put so much pressure onto men like 
I won't, I'll be the, you know, a good woman or a perfect woman or whatever, as long as you don't do, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is that doesn't make me happy. That's a, that's a lot of load. That's a lot to ask for. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to be the first one to let you know that you're going to experience some hurt messing with me. Like, you know, yeah. like, I'm just a broken human. Like, I'm not perfect. I would never be perfect. Um, and I would make, and, and yes, acknowledgement, men, we're dumb. We make stupid, like, like, yeah, fam, don't go over there and wink at the girl. Like, that's not good. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? So, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, like, I just want women to really just ask themselves, like, like, we need better men. We need, you know, like, Yes, that's a huge like that's a true statement. That's just hard. That's yeah. hard. That's a lot of weight on our shoulders because yeah. we have to especially if you're looking just for men to satisfy you. Yeah. Like that's that's just a lot to ask for. And and I think men as well. I mean, we can't just, you know, look for a perfect woman and think she's gonna complete everything because yeah. she gonna have flaws and some things that that's not gonna make us happy. She's gonna do something worth, I don't know, stupid. But um, we have to learn that as well. And I think it's it's tough to if men ask women to just be better or be perfect or say do what we say or stuff like that. Yeah. It's just not. That's just not a life you want to live. Like, yeah, no, that's good. And like you said, it it it, it both it begins by like both group acknowledging, yo, this is what we do wrong, like. That's the first thing I think is a self-awareness. Like me personally, this is what I've done wrong. This is something that we do that hurts you and we're sorry for doing it. And the problem is nobody wants to go first. Like the women are like, well, why do you want us to apologize? You guys for years have done this. Mm -hmm. And the men are like, why we apologize? Recently, you guys have done this. It's like, Mm -hmm. how are we going to move forward? Who's going to be, who's going to be the leader? which is why I personally believe men should start. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that we've always done on this show. We've always been like, yo, this is what we've done wrong. Yeah. This is what we've done wrong. Yeah. We're we're, we're not ashamed of saying it. These are things that we've done wrong and we got to do a better job of it. Yeah. And we acknowledge it that we got to do, we got to get better. But to your point, it's like so many people say, "I, I only do bad because bad was first done to me. Yeah. It's the worst thing you can do. That's the worst thing you can do. I only cheat on him because he cheated on me. I only, I only scream at him because he screams at me. I don't trust any of these guys because this guy did this. I'm like, so you became a bad person because somebody was bad to you. Mm. Men and women. Yeah. For real, like guys that, man, I don't trust these girls because, man, it's, well, they just one chick and she did this. Now, man, F them all. Yeah. Like, so you let one human being totally change the trajectory of your life. Yeah. Like, you remember what, uh, I can't remember the pastor's name uh, we had on the show where he said that uh, sex is a byproduct of like happiness and marriage. Oh, Gary Thomas. Yeah. Do you think that your significant other is the same thing? Like, if we put in a relationship with, like, with God? Because I feel like we're asking so much out of the opposite sex for complete satisfaction when that just won't happen. Yeah. That's that like, idolatry is big. So there's this lady that I want to get on the show, and you, when she gets on the show, she can be so awesome. I've been working to working working at it, mm-hmm. and so she has this idea. I wanted to talk to Stefan about this, so you kind of pulled my card a little earlier. But <laughs> but she had this idea that nowadays what people want in relationships it's unrealistic. Yeah, un- un- unbelievably unrealistic. Yeah compared to what everybody expected in the past. So her, she gave two things. I'm going to go three. But there's three things <laughs> go to, three. <laughs> There's three things people ask for that, historically speaking, you couldn't get all three at the same time. The first is passion. Like uh-huh. you want somebody to, it makes your heart flutter. You want somebody who is sexually attractive to you all the time. You want somebody that... You're always excited about that always gives you the butterflies yeah so you want passion then you want companionship i want them to be my best friend mm-hmm. i want them to be always there for me i want them to always be interested in me i want them always to be shoulder i can cry on and express my feelings to right so you want passion you want companionship and then you want longevity mm-hmm. i want them to do this until i die yeah and then we're living she pointed out twice as long so i want them to do it 
for 60, 70 years. Yeah. I want a passionate, exciting, spontaneous, yet consistent, yeah. trustworthy friendship for 70 years yeah. with one person. Yeah. And I want you to make me happy. Yeah. Good luck. Can you do that? That's what, that's what people are asking for. Yeah. And when somebody doesn't do that, then all of a sudden, all guys are X. All women are Y. Mm-hmm. And that's why you got this never-ending battle. Never-ending battle. Yeah. Because like you said, they will always let you down. Yeah. And they will always do something wrong. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And she was saying like, her theory was like 100 years ago, people felt like companionship, which she defines as love, is not guaranteed in marriage. Marriage is more of a commodity. It's her theory, but it's okay. just her theory. It's more of a commodity. I do, I give you uh, stability and protection and as a man and as a woman, you give me children and, you know, whatever type of emotional care you give me. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know? That's, that's wild. So it's like, if we have passion, we have it, but more than likely we won't. If we actually love each other, that's cool. If we if it happens, it does, it does, it doesn't. And then longevity, people didn't live long. People yeah. died. There was war. You know, like there was diseases. Yeah. So you weren't with somebody till like 90. So, yeah, I just think it's just really interesting. And I feel like a lot of that goes back to now so much of self-fulfillment comes from another person, which is why everybody's just so mad. Yeah. This is why everybody's just angry online. I saw something crazy on Twitter. It was like, not all men have like six things. <laughs> it was just so, it was like wild. I don't remember the six things, but I thought that was pretty funny. What do you mean? Like six different attributes you meant? Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, like financially stable. Yeah. Someone was like really X-rated, kind of crazy. Yeah, because it, what she pointed out, and I oh man, I don't even want to keep on going here. No, we, so awesome. we, we can say something. Yeah, can, but, say but something. what she was pointing out is that sometimes to get companionship, you can't get passion. Because what mm -hmm. makes things passionate doesn't work well in a compa uh, companionship. That's what she argues. Yeah, so she calls it love and desire. So in passion, it's like it's, it's being spontaneous. Yeah, like so for example, you meet a girl for the first time. And you experience all these emotions because you don't know what she's going to say. Yeah. You don't know how she's going to text you back. All these things, like all these mysteries, right? Yeah. But then all of a sudden, if it's a companionship, you know she's going to respond. Yeah. You know, so that, those, the, that text anxiety that makes you think about that person all the time. It's gone. It's gone. Because yeah. you know they're going to text you back. They're going to call me. They're going to hit me up. Da, yeah. da, 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 da. So she was just sharing how like a lot of times when you get one, you don't get the other. That's interesting. You know? We got to find her out. We got to talk to her. Yeah. I have a lot of questions. She has a, she's really good, bro. And so I just, going back to the point, I think, man, men and women both have pains. Both broken. And we both done bad things to one another. Both jacked up. And we got to find a way to move forward. It starts, I guess it starts with us, man. Realizing like, yes, ladies, we, we're not, we're not perfect. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's give, Men or women excuse just because you feel some type of way to be a bad individual and to be a bad person and do bad things. Yeah. And that's and that's what's that's such a good point. It's like I love as you said that because wrong was done to you, it doesn't mean you can do wrong to other people. You know? And something else I was thinking about was let's let's go women mm -hmm. before we go women. If you guys have a woman who you guys really, really like that you wanted to talk about this issue, because people are easily going to say, you guys are just a bunch of men in the room talking. Send, which is true. Send a, which is true. This is a roommate's podcast, by the way. You know, I'm Behind not sure people have two, men. have two men. But you know, if you have a woman, send, me, send us a message. Let us know who's a woman that you want to talk to about this with. We'll reach out to her. Yeah, we'll pull up. Like, yeah, I exactly. Pull up, we'll yeah, up. so I, I want to have this conversation between us because we're the roommates. We... That's what we do. But if you guys have a woman that you want us to talk to, send us a message and let us know who you would you, who would you like us to talk to about that conversation. I guarantee we'll reach out to them. 
So let us know who you guys want, roommate, roommate family, want us to talk about this very same idea about the gender wars, about men being mad at women and women being mad at men and how to solve it. We want to bring a woman into the room. We want to, what did he say? A representation, right? We yeah, want to have yeah. representation in the room. So let us know who you would like us to talk to. We'll reach out to them. We'll do it for you guys. So what do you think is some things that women get mad at men for? Where do I start? <laughs> Where do we begin? Yeah, nah. I think, I think, I think number one is not knowing what we want. Um, as far as it's like we start talking to a woman, we don't know exactly where, like, what we want. If it's a relationship or if it's pause. Let me ask a better question. What are some things that hurt women that men do? That's something that's a little bit better because you can go on for days with that first list. <laughs> that first question. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's super long. What was, what was it? What's the what's one of the things that hurt women? That men do. That men do. That like a lot. Like you've noticed, a lot of women have experienced pain. Cheat. Cheat. Yeah. Okay. Infidelity. Cheating. What are the things that men do that women don't like that men do? Um. Hmm. Can we say lie? Did women say men oh, yeah, lie? Lie, lie? Okay. Men, you lie. Oh, we never lie. Yeah. Um. Probably don't say like explain our emotions. Express our feelings. Express our feelings, yeah. Uh I would say like probably don't care more, but I feel like that's relative. I feel like that's a different type. Could we say that um women say men are immature? Immature, for Immaturity. sure. Immaturity. Immaturity. Okay. Probably what is that for? Yeah. Uh, bless I want more. Ugly. What are <laughs> what are some of the things that like uh, women like it really they abuse physical abuse oh yeah physical abusive. and mental yeah abusive and, men are uh, abusive just abusive oh they're controlling controlling for sure okay so men are cheating they're abusive they're controlling they're lying they don't express their feelings immature I think that's the big shebangs. And um, why somebody gonna be in the comments and put like ten other things? Duh. Y'all don't watch, y'all don't bathe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she loud. She loud. And, as and, <laughs> and what's that thing when they don't accept responsibility yeah. or abandon their responsibility? Like they leave Aban- their, yeah, leave abandon their families. Respons- yeah, abandon, abandon responsibilities. responsibilities. Yeah, men definitely abandon their responsibilities. Yeah. Mm. So mm. Mm. those that's. That's real. That's I think that's a good good list, man. For sure. So for the women who have experienced these things, mm-hmm. they have experienced it, their mothers, their friends, sisters, all that stuff. What would be your message to those who are hurting and have experienced these things? I'm sorry. <laughs> like, yeah. Um just I'll start off with apology first, really. Um just say I'm sorry for the, you know, the acknowledgement, all the mistakes that that us men make. Uh, but also just, just a reminder, I don't think it should be, you know, just like another excuse, but you know, we are broken people. We are men, we will make mistakes. I mean, you just look at the past, everybody hurts everybody. Um, and I think we just have to really be able to express the pain that we feel to, you know, if it's our, you know, current boyfriend, ex, you know, your brother, whoever, hurt, whoever man hurt you um, to express how, you know, how the way they did it and do it in the correct way so they can really learn and um, not and listen and how to apply, um, you know, <clears throat> to avoid those same mistakes again to mm-hmm. somebody else. So I think that's something where I would start off just apology and then teach, you know, just yeah. in a loving way. Yeah, you know, so no, that's good, and I think it's so important that, like I said, the first step to causing a ceasefire, <laughs> a <laughs> ceasefire, a ceasefire in this, uh, in this, what, what we see as this gender war is like, accept the responsibility for what you did. Yeah, whether you threw the first punch or not, whether you've done wrong or not, we've all wronged somebody in one shape or form. If you're a man, you probably wronged a woman in your life. Yeah. If you're a woman, you probably wronged the man in your life. Mm-hmm. And we're probably all the cause of somebody who's saying men ain't this or woman ain't this because yeah. of what we've done. We're all we guilty gave, we of We gave it. reasons to both of those things. Yeah, so yeah. I think the first thing that we're showing is that as a man, put it, put it on the chin, accept yeah. the responsibility. This is what we did. 
this is how we fail. This is how we yeah. weren't the men that God created us to be. And then also for men, I think, I think it's one of the things that we kind of talked about earlier this year is not to take on our identity. Like, well, since I ain't shit, yeah. I'm going to just not be shit. Exactly. And I'm going to do what I want and treat you. And since you already think that about me, yeah. I'm going to just do that. Yeah. Um. So I think that that um test is a man character as well, maturity. Yeah. That you're not just going to take on that and just settle and just do what you want just because women already think you're a certain way. Like, you don't have to walk and live by that identity society of women give to men so i love that i love that so so like i said the first thing is because i what we're doing right now i don't even think we should even point the finger at women let's just let's just be yeah. men and let's just let's yeah, just, take, just take let's it. take what we got to take on the chin yeah. and let's just show how we think we should process this so we accept responsibility for what we did wrong yeah and next like you said but also accept your identity like yeah we're not that Men are not that. Yeah. Men are not these gotta, monstrous gotta, Harvey Weinsteins. Sure. Yeah. We're not these losers. We ain't these ain't shit N words, these F boys. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't these bands. We're not, that's not who we are. Yeah. We're human beings. And like any human being, we do good and we do bad. We make mistakes. We fall short. Mm -hmm. But we are not bad people. Yeah. We're not. And so I think a lot of men need to hear that. Yeah, you, I you mean, know, I, like, trust me, we, Hafiz and I did probably 99% of guys, if, what, every F-boy or whatever. Yeah, I, well, I haven't cheated, though. Oh, I haven't cheated either. Okay, this is, yeah. <laughs> okay, That's why I said 99%. <laughs> I have definitely yeah, haven't cheated either, yeah. but, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'll break up with you before I cheat. Yeah. Yeah, might as well, yeah what's the point? Anyways, yeah. that's a different conversation. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, what I meant by that, we're broken. Yeah. We're going to make mistakes. We're not going to be perfect. Um, so, and, uh, we definitely have to understand that, acknowledge that and take it on and make sure, you know, we handle each situation with care. Yeah. So like I said, fellas, like this is not who you are and women, this is not who men are. You've, though you've had one bad experience, that's not all men. Yeah. Don't believe in lie because I feel like. If you really believe that, then your son will become that as well. Exactly. That's a good boy. Say that one more time. <laughs> Say that one more time. Like, if you actually believe all the, the negative things that, you know, we hear and say about men, then your son would be that as well. Mm. Like that's, and that's scary. Like, that is scary. That is so Emmer effing good, bro. That's, that's so good. That's scary. Because you see that if yeah. you embrace this idea that men ain't this you believe that in your core yeah so subconsciously you're gonna treat this boy like he ain't like he's just like his daddy yeah and oh, you're gonna like your daddy. You, then you're gonna pour out this anger yeah and then the certain men in your life that you're gonna meet they're gonna end up being like that mm -hmm. because if that's all you think about men what are you gonna attract mm. What are you going to bring out? Not just who, what you're going to check. What are you going to bring out? If you think all men are this certain way, what are you going to bring out when a man encounters you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like someone saying all black people are, are rude and nasty. Yeah. So how are they going to act towards black people? They're going to act rude and nasty and then bring out the rude and nasty in them and say, that, oh, that's why. That's yeah. why all black people are just like because of you, what you just did. Yeah. Not knowing that it was your demeanor that brought out the worst in this person. Yeah. It's, I mean, exactly. I mean, just because I feel like a boy mind is so, you know, it's so young. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, and, and that's like a number one, they say, you know, in Christianity and whatever, that you will see like, you know, the birth of sin in, in kids because you have to teach them how to share. You got to teach them how mm -hmm. to say thank you, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what you're going to see. You're going to see kids disobey. Mm -hmm. You're going to see kids, you know, do bad things. Yeah. And you're probably subconsciously going to tell them like yeah. you're just like your father. Yeah. Or you're just like every other man, not knowing that you feeding that identity and that's what he's going to believe. Exactly. Growing, like going forward and he's going to believe as a young man, like I'm nobody, you know, and he's going to eventually fall back into what makes him comfortable. Nine times out of 10 for men, if it ain't drugs, it ain't alcohol, guess what it is? Breaking women's hearts. Breaking women's hearts. Unfortunate, enjoyable pastime. A lot of people engage in. Yeah, but yeah. So, guys, please, please know your identity, and 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 women, please, please don't generalize all men. And so then, like this is the same thing about same thing that women can do. Women, once you acknowledge it, well, this is what we've done wrong as women. Mm -hmm. Once women 
accept their responsibility, uh, their identity also, that they're beautiful people, though they've made mistakes. Yeah. Men, don't say, because one girl did this, all girls are like that. Stop generalizing. Yeah. And stop taking the lowest common denominator and making that the norm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like when people think about black people, they think about the poorest of blacks. Yeah. When they think about white people, they think about the richest of whites. Yeah. You know? And they don't look at what's really normal is, is rich and poor in both. Yeah. When people think about women, they either think all women are bad. Think about men, they think all men are bad, but not knowing it's good and bad in both. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man, I just think it's just so big that we don't demonize and we don't group this entire people just because of one behavior for somebody in their gender. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. And then I think the the the, the fourth and the last thing is to to love love somebody and love people like they've never hurt you. You know? And that's like, tough. And that's tough to do. That's the that's, hardest that's thing hard. to do. Yeah, and hard. what I mean by that is I'm not saying like if a man be sexually abused you growing up now you're being his best friend I'm not yeah, communicating yeah, yeah, yeah. that I'm talking about love other men as if a man in your past has never hurt you got you don't yeah. love other women as if a woman in you your past you shouldn't start off with a clean exactly like, you shouldn't start off with negative 20 exactly like, yeah. <laughs> negative 20 what's going on right now <laughs> yeah. what's the temperature right now? <laughs> yeah no that's good and I think it's so important because I feel like so many people they start off in such a bad state when they meet somebody new mm -hmm. they expect this woman to be just like the, all these girls just like all these they're expecting these men to be just like all these guys yeah and I think it's just causing so much anger yeah so if you seek you know, the bad things, you yeah. will eventually find it. Yeah. Man. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Anything else you think to help end these, um, this, this gender war, man? I mean, I feel like it's, it's what's been, I noticed, I think being around people, like positive people or people that speak into your life is very, very important. Because if you're, if I, we surround ourselves with guys that always talk about bad about women, we're going to naturally think that. Mm. I even feel that way just being in India. I feel like I, I feel like I cuss more. I feel yeah. like I, I'm more grumpier. And that yeah. could be just, just, you know, what stage of life I'm going through. But um, also, it's just the, the people I'm around. Um, not saying they are bad people. I yeah. just know I picked up some of those habits. Mm. Um, so I feel like if you're a guy and you're around, you know, guys that probably do treat women wrong or talk bad about women, call them B words, et cetera, et cetera. You eventually going to become that as well. So yeah. you don't want to be the product of your, of that environment. That's good. That's a yeah. really good point. So men really be careful about who is teaching you about women. That's yeah. Who's yeah. telling you stories about women? Yeah. Uh, wait, what, who, like, who, what have you learned about women? Like if somebody just came up to you and taught you about women. Or you just learn just from... Want to know a secret? Experience. Oh, Jesus. Do I want to know a secret? Growing up, I used to read a lot of girl books. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> the diary. I used, to, I used to read a lot of girl books. So that was part of it. So I, that's how I kind of got a lot of... What do you mean by girl black Oprah? I mean, like, <laughs> like biographies that women would write and like, you know, like you have men books like the Hardy Boys and stuff like that. You have the okay. girl books like the Little Sister Babysitters Club and stuff like that. <laughs> Some baby's club is hilarious. Yeah. Um, so um. So yeah. Okay. I think for me, I mean, I think me. I think I just learned. Just probably. I probably. I mean, my parents for the most part. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, definitely in my older years, has been just the people I've been around. Yeah, and it's yeah. usually not men. Who really, really, really like respect women? You said usually not men. Yeah, when okay. you're young, when you're not saying you, I'm yeah, saying, yeah, and yeah. when you're younger and you're around your 17 year old buddies, yeah. and not men are saying the most kind things yeah, about I women. Mean, oh my, being around in the construction industry is just, and then being in the sports world. <laughs> oh man, I mean, we, I, I'd be on the road and like some of the people be around. They just, I, that's all they talk about is just, I'll do this and I'll do that. And, <laughs> I'm looking like fam. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's just, like, it's just, it's just, it's 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 shame. You yeah, know, it's like yeah. I understand you attracted to a woman, but like some of the stuff I be hearing, I just be looking like fam. Yeah, like if I ever hear the words come out your mouth about my sister, <laughs> yeah, square up. Yeah, like, it's yeah, time. yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And like 
I guess I have to just been around now. Like it's it's some time. I even know we talk about like man, but like the the vulgar language they use. Yeah. Good thing we fired they behind. Yeah. Jesus Lord. But anyways. Yeah. No, so I think I think like I said, the first the way to build a bridge is I think for us men to take responsibility for what we did. And then just not to point the finger. So I think another thing is that would be dope is that whenever a girl tweets about how bad men are, don't don't go into how bad women are. Don't you know? Yeah, I mean that's, just, that's don't, literally or message, the flame. Yeah, or do a video. Don't 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 do that. Yeah, be like, if you're gonna comment, say I'm sorry that this happened to you. Yeah, hopefully you can experience healing and move forward in your I'm life. Praying for you. Yeah. I'm sorry that yeah, you're so yeah, hurt yeah, that you let this pain come inside of you. I'm praying for your healing because you're going to need it one day. Oh, gosh. Yeah, 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 that, that, don't use all caps. Don't use, it, don't don't use all, all caps, my G. Yeah. But no, I think it's good. I, and, I, and that's one thing I, I, I hope people hold us accountable to with the show. I don't ever want to turn the show into all women do that because I feel like it's so bad when you say all women do this, all men do yeah. that. And I'm, tr- and I'm trying to change my language and say the women I've experienced or yeah. some women that I know, yeah. you know, or some men that I know or the men that yeah, I've yeah. experienced. Instead of I mean, general- that's important. You yeah. can't say all. You yeah. gotta say some. Uh, but yeah, I think and we're also trying to, we're trying to be better people as yeah. well. Um, and we're trying to understand women too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, guy, I mean, you know? Yeah. Okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. I'm so, not very good at that one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm talking about swinging a miss, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're we're, we're learning. Yeah, and, and and like I said, you know, I know the guys right now want us to go in on the women. They want us to go in. I just I just think it's like I don't see no this, there's no positive in this. And like I said, when the way you build a bridge is you acknowledge your faults and you don't worry about them acknowledging theirs and you move forward. Don't yeah. wor- don't worry about what women do and this. And just none, be the example. Just I mean, be the example. Be the, and, just be the example. Just be the example. And that's what man. we're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, just be the example. Um, that's it. I mean, sure, ain't nothing else to say, player. I know you got olive green on. What's up? What's going on? That's how you yeah, feel. Yeah, my, my, my I realize that black is not my favorite color. It's actually olive green. You look like an olive green. Uh, I was supposed to go to this place today, but it's, it's the time. Yeah, I forgot. All right, man. So, yep. Olive green is your favorite. I actually got an olive green hoodie. Ooh, that's dope. You like want the it? one Brandon had? I think so. Actually, you want it? If you have it, yeah. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Happy well, Hanukkah. Well, actually, I got you something else, but I forgot to bring it. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. It's for your birthday. I know. <laughs> I know. I wonder. I don't know if you can fit it, though. That's the only thing. Oh. That's the only thing. What size you wear? And what? What size you wear? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. In what? Shoes? In general, no. In, in the shirt. Oh, like uh, large? Okay. Sometimes a medium, depending on the shirt. Oh, sometimes a medium. Yeah, okay. I, I feel yeah. like this may work. Yeah, is who is my shoulders bigger than yours? Or I think your shoulders are bigger than mine. I think it may work because like, my shoulders ridiculous. So okay. I think because um, I tried it on. I was like, <laughs> how much you weigh? Do you mind uh, saying one ninety five? Okay, I'm bigger than you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it will work. I think it actually fit perfect. Okay. <laughs> I hope you wear. It. I think. What a, sweet, I think what a like sweetie it. pie. What a sweetie pie, <laughs> my G. Yeah, no, don't, All right, no, podcast, no, mall, 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 don't be calling me no sweetie pie. Don't <laughs> yeah, we'll call me no sweetie pie. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, man. so in closing, guys, because we love you so much and because we're super excited about everything that you guys have done this Thursday for Thanksgiving, we are going to give you guys a bonus episode of the Roommates Podcast. I wasn't there for that one either. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Christmas I'm there. I know that I'm trying my best not to miss no more episodes. Yeah. Right? Spend a lot of money. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I won't be there for that one. So, but I got that one. Yeah. Yay. So, this Thursday, guys, we love you so much. We're going to give you a bonus episode of the Roommates Podcast. It's good. It's going to be on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Here. Spotify, Here. SoundCloud. It's going to be everywhere. It's a bonus episode. It's yep. going to be just for you guys. We love you so much. We want to give you. We're for thankful for the fans. Uh, we're thankful for the family. Ooh. Ooh, they guys are not fans. We love you. You got to her family. Yes, yes, yes. Anything you want to say in closing, bro? Nah, man. It's it's good to be back. Yeah. Um you know, continue to pray for me, y'all. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I'm doing okay. It's just only it's only temporary. So, um, but I'm glad to be back. Love it's it. our first time talking in a long time. It's good I to know. see you, man. I know, I know it is. It's been a while. You cut your hair. <laughs> I did. Stop cutting your hair. What's happening? 
Well, no, I didn't cut it. Like I cut like this. Yeah. No, I didn't cut it. Oh, it's not. It's not growing. It back. shrinks. It shrinks. Oh, it shrinks. I have a lot of shrinkage. What, what, what grade you got? What grade that is? What grade? Grade C. Oh, you mean the letter? Yeah. Oh, it's like it's like probably like D. Uh, it's D, but it's like probably like four D. Four D. I believe so. Four <laughs> D. Probably it's like the curliest of the curliest. Yeah, my my this, believe it or not, it's shrinkage as well. So I don't know how big my hair is. Yeah, look at my hair, ladies. Look at these grains. Look at this. Look at the games. <laughs> games. But yeah. YouTube channel coming soon. Nah, I haven't. Uh, I'm I'm glad you're back, bro. I'm, I'm glad to be back, man. Excited about what's happening. What's, what's about, to about to happen? Yeah, man. I'm excited too. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm really am. It's gonna be gonna be really good. Um. So I mean, yeah. Let's do it, God dang it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So guys. As usual, please make sure you guys comment, 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 share. We love it. We love it when you guys share our content with people. That means the world to us. Thank you guys so much. And wait, and continue to ask questions as well. I, I, we see everything. We do. Um, continue to emails. We had, like I said, I had a few phone calls. I did a few podcasts while I was in Indy. So all those things are great and lovely. So continue to ask away and we'll figure it out. Love it. Um, yeah. So, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, this is your boy Hafiz. We start the show, Pepe. And we got a roommates, guys. Make sure you share, 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 comment, 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 comment. Let people know when they experience the best hour of, you, of their week. We love you so much. Thank you guys for everything. You got the so awesome. We had a roommates and adios.